In this tutorial, we're going to look at some more practical DOM exercises with JavaScript, but this time we're focusing on tabular data. Hi, this is James from Junior Developer Central and welcome to another instalment of our JavaScript DOM practical exercise series. If you have a second before we start, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and so you don't miss out on any future tutorials. And you can find a link to this tutorial's exercises in the description below. So we've got five more exercises for you in this tutorial and they'll all be focusing on manipulating this tabular data. In other words, we've just got a HTML table with a header, some rows and some columns. And one thing that's going to make this slightly different from the other tutorials is there aren't any IDs or classes set up on those rows and columns. So we're actually going to need to use our CSS selector skills to make sure we're manipulating the right parts of the table. As always, you can go through these exercises on your own and then come back to a solution if you need help or simply sit back and watch the video and I'll show you how I came up with some solutions for these. So let's have a look at the first exercise, exercise one, which is to add a new row into the table with the details for someone called Sean Rees. So we're going to need to add a new row into the table and the appropriate columns with the data that's been provided. So we could just append all of this to the bottom of the table with a HTML string, that is some HTML markup that's just been put inside a JavaScript string. But I'm going to use a different solution. I'm going to actually create the individual elements. So we'll be creating a new row and all of the individual columns and then appending that to the bottom of the table. So let's first of all create a new row. And we need to create the individual TD elements, the columns. So we could create individual variable names, but I'm going to create an array and then loop through this to create the individual columns just to save us some time. So this is really just a shortcut to create multiple column rather than having to call the document.create element manually four times. So now all we need to do is append the new row onto the table. So now if we scroll to the bottom of the table, you can see Sean's details have been entered as the last row. So I've been fairly generic with my query selector here as there's only one table on the page, but as always, if you're doing this in a real project, you'll need to make sure that the query selector you use is specific enough to only find the element that you want to update. So that's the solution I came up with for exercise one. If you did come up with something different, feel free to post it in a comment below, but let's move on to exercise two now. So exercise two is fairly simple. It's just asking us to update Leona Dixon's handle, which could be like their Twitter handle or username. So the code to do this is pretty straightforward. What's slightly more tricky is actually selecting the right element. Because as mentioned before, in the HTML markup, there aren't classes or IDs that will easily enable us to select the right person. And whilst we could use a document.query selector all to find all of the column elements, for example, and then check their value to see if it's the one we're looking for, because we can see the position of Leona's information, I'm just going to use a CSS selector with the nth child property. So within our table, I'm looking for the fourth row. And within that row, I'm looking for the fourth TD element. So whilst this solution is nice and quick, it does depend on the data being in the correct place. For example, if any of the rows move around or we insert new ones at the top, we'd need to update this query selector to make sure the right person's handle is being updated. So that's a quick solution for exercise two. Let's have a look at exercise three. So exercise three is asking us to do the exact thing that I just described in exercise two, and that is to move Rosa Reed's entry to the top of the table, and also to ensure that all of the index numbers in the first column are still in sequence. So I'm going to move Rosa's row by selecting the element and then just inserting it to the top of the table. So to insert Rosa's row into the top of the table, I actually want to get a reference to the first row in the table so I can insert Rosa's row after that row. And the reason why this is important to select that is because the first row is actually the heading row. So if we were to just insert it to the top of the table element, it would appear above the header. So we've now got Rosa's details at the top of the table, and now we need to adjust the index column to make sure that it runs in sequence again. So the way I'm going to do this is just select all of those elements and loop through them and reset their inner text value, starting with one at the top. 
And the second parameter that we can access from our for each function is the index number of the loop that we're going through. So that will obviously start at zero. So if we just add one to that and then assign it to the columns in a text. So now you can see in our output in the table that the column index numbers have been reset. So if your table was generated from some data, like some JSON from an API, for example, you might not need to worry about this kind of manipulation, but it just shows you a good way that JavaScript can be used to update some static HTML on the page. So that's exercise three, let's have a look at exercise four. So exercise four is asking us to basically pick up the whole of the handle column at the end of the table and then move all of its contents so that it becomes the second column in the table. So we want it to appear just after the index row while still preserving the first and last name columns after that. So we can't just use a query selector to select the entire handle column because that's just not how it's laid out in the HTML despite how it appears on page. We actually need to loop through each row and then pick up the TD element that's in the handle column, which is the fourth column, and then move it to just after the first column, which is the index column. So let's first of all set up our loop. And I want to get a reference to the TD element that's inside of the handle column and I also want to get a reference to the TD element that's inside of the index column. So note how I'm just calling the query selector function directly on the row element, there's no need to go right the way back to the document element. And I'm also going to include an additional selector to check if we're looking at the heading column by just looking for a TH element. So on each iteration of the for each loop, I should have two variables, the handle column, which is actually the TD element inside that column, and also the same for the index column too. So referencing the index column, I'm just going to insert the handle column directly after that element occurs in the document. Oh, and I've just missed out the all in the query selector all statement there, so it'll only pick up the first one. And I've also got an extra colon in here, which we obviously don't need. So when that code runs, you can see that the handle column has been moved in its entirety to just after the index column. And because we've picked up the TD elements themselves, the data that's inside of them has also been moved across. So I'm not sure if that's the most elegant solution. There might be a better way to write your query selector to pick out all of the column elements and loop through those instead to move them. But this seemed to be the simplest solution I could come up with. If you had something different, feel free to share it in the comments below. So let's have a look at the final exercise, exercise five. So exercise five was just a simple styling update to go through each of the rows and highlight or shade every other row. And it's up to you whether you want to start from the header or from the first real row in the table, but it should be just a case of simply looping through those rows and adjusting the style property to say, for example, change the background color. And of course you could play around with the if statement to decide when the actual highlighting occurs. For example, adding one to the index to make sure that the first heading row is displayed as white. Of course, as always with styling updates, there's always a shortcut. And because we're using bootstrap as well for this table, we could just add the bootstrap table striped class to the table to achieve the same effect. So either solution is fine, but if you did come up with that one for just adding the class list, I'll give you an extra point, simply because you found the lazy option. So that about wraps up this tutorial for our practical DOM exercises. Hopefully you've seen how this has been a good use of testing your query selector knowledge, and also how you might deal with those tricky situations where you don't have an ID in the markup that you can manipulate. And also when you need to deal with those situations where you don't have IDs and classes in the markup that you can easily access via JavaScript, and we've seen how to use a few different functions like the insert adjacent element function. So that's it for this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and so you don't miss out on any future tutorial updates.